around five minutes to shut down time to prevent residents being trapped in the lifts. First things first, number one, make sure they are super hosts. All right, so getting to the Airbnb was a disaster. It looks a lot like the projects, to be honest with you, in the US, if you're familiar with the projects. Boom. What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Joannis or Joe Hatagua. I'm a Sierra Leonean American living here in West Africa. And if you wanna see what $102 per night Airbnb looks like in Victoria Island, Lagos, Nigeria, then this is definitely the video for you. So I've said it before, I'll say it again, I spent two weeks in Victoria Island, Lagos, Nigeria, and during those two weeks I stayed in an Airbnb, $102 a night. Um, as many of you know, there was some turmoil and some challenges, I'm gonna go through all of that. Um, in the end, the stay ended up being pretty good overall, but guys, you gotta look out for certain things when it comes to Airbnbs, and I'll give you that at the end, but for right now, let's just jump right into the video. All right, so getting to the Airbnb was a disaster. Disaster. So first things first, pulling up to the Airbnb, uh, I didn't know what the outside looked like. Uh, they only showed pictures of the inside. The outside, um, it's an old federal housing complex and um, it looks a lot like the projects, to be honest with you, in the US, if you're familiar with the projects. Um, they don't do a lot with the upkeep and the outside, so I was really nervous. Cause I'm like, man, I'm spending a lot of money to stay here and it doesn't look like what I thought it was gonna look like. Then once we get inside the complex and to the building, what I didn't know was there was a lockbox for the key. So my assumption was that since I had communicated with the person on Airbnb, which you can see here, I communicated with them and I said to them, is there anything else I need to know? They completely ignored that statement. So I just figured, okay, I can ask security. Security will have a key. Security did not have a key. There's a lockbox next to the apartment. Also, there are no numbers on the apartments. Once you, like, they just, some people wrote them above their door and like Sharpie. So I had to just assume that this was the apartment. Um, since nobody was answering the door, I was assuming that that was the place that I was going. And I saw a lockbox next to the door. Of course, I did not have a combination for the lockbox. So I had to stand outside for 30 minutes while I'm communicating with the Airbnb host to actually give me the information of someone else who had the combination to the lockbox. I get the lockbox combination finally through some texting and calling and going back and forth with the folks. Then we get inside. I get inside and then of course there's no power. But it's not that there's no power in the entire compound because there was power in the entire compound at this point in time of the night. The problem was is that they turned off the switch in the apartment. You know how like, um, you know, you, you have the, uh, what is that thing called? You know, everyone has those uh, circuit breakers, right? Where you have the circuit breaker or a circuit box and you can turn off all your circuits just to make sure there's no electricity. You can turn it back on to ensure that all of your power is back on in house. We had all the circuits off. And so um, that person had to show me how to do that. And then again, that person had to show me how to get on the Wi-Fi. And so it was like, it was basically three hours of back and forth before I finally was inside with the AC on, with the Wi-Fi on, and finally like, okay, I can settle in before I go to sleep. This is all that first night. Then, then on top of all of that, I go to put some food in the fridge. Um, we did a late night order. I did a late night order. Go to put some food in the fridge and the fridge is disgusting. There is juice that's like caked on, red juice that's caked on. There was like some kind of sauce that somebody left, who knows how long they were there, but it was in a hot fridge for at least a week. The last person who stayed there, I think was about um, three weeks or so before me, I think is what at least the last review that they had. And so can you imagine whatever that was, with it, the smell that came out of that fridge was something else. It was disgusting. So anyway, um, I called the owner, they said they were gonna send somebody over the first thing in the morning. The person didn't come till way later the next day. Anyway, it eventually got handled, and by the next day, it was pretty smooth until power went out, 
and I wasn't aware of how often the power was going to go out and that they weren't going to be turning on the generator. Because there are fuel issues in the country, because of the nationwide fuel shortages, which is hiking up the uh, cost of gas, apparently they were rationing when they were going to keep the generators on. So even though power goes out all the time in Nigeria, most big estates have generators or they have solar. Um, this place had a generator, but because of the fuel issues, they didn't fuel the generators all the time. And so these generators were off for extended periods of time. We're talking about two to three hours when it's really hot and you don't have um, access to AC or you can't charge your devices, right? So anyway, all of that happened. So look guys, as I said, you know, this is not indicative of all Airbnbs in Nigeria, in Lagos, or even Victoria Island for that matter. It was specific to this Airbnb. They also didn't give all the details on the generator and light, light challenges and all the different things that they should have. They also didn't have it clean first. Um, but let me just take you on a tour of the property, but just take a look at it real quick. Dear residents, notice of power rationing. Sequel to our communique of 5th March 2022, please be informed that the elevators shall be out of service from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. and from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. from today, Monday the 21st March 2022. Please note that this situation shall be reviewed when we get better power supply from the EKEDC and diesel prices become considerably lower. Further note that for safety purposes, all elevators will be shut down five minutes to shut down time to prevent residents being trapped in the lifts. Thank you, and then the building management. All right guys, I'm gonna take you on the tour of the place, so check it out. All right, you first walk in and here's the kitchen. kitchen. There's a guest bathroom here. As you can see. All right, and here is the living room. So you got a dining room table here. This actually gives you the meter for how much electricity you have. Looks like I have a pretty good amount. Um, there's some artwork, there's a clock there. So here's the living room area. Some artworks there. There we go, here's the living room. TV and the sound system. So they have like a DVD player, they have DSTV, they have some serious speakers set up. Nice little TV system. I probably won't watch any TV while I'm here. Um, but yeah, this is the place. Okay, so here's the view from the window. There's a basketball court next door. Um, people downstairs have their own little private areas and private spaces. That's the main highway there. Right now it's not as busy, but it was pretty busy earlier. A couple of high rises across the way. There's also a balcony here where the AC unit is and you know when you want to dry your clothes outside a clothes drying rack all right so now we can walk upstairs all right so got a little workout area a little couch here's the main bathroom Then you come here, this is the second bedroom. Oh, there's a washing machine here. So you can wash clothes. There's the hot water heater tank there for the bathroom. So here's the second bedroom, the ironing, the iron is down there. Um, here's the view from this room. I yeah, so you're looking in the property here. Uh, there's an outdoor space here. You can go outside a little bit. You have like a little mini balcony here for this bedroom. So here's the master bedroom. You have closet space over here, which is good. There's the bed here. Obviously, I have plugs next to the bed. You got a TV here. 
And here's the view from the bedroom. There's a little balcony here. You can go out onto the balcony if you want. And then here's the view outside. All right, so this is the courtyard in between a couple of the buildings and the federal housing complex here that I'm staying. So they have pathways to walk between the different clusters. A through D, each cluster has a number of buildings that have a number of different apartments or what they call flats. In between B and C, there's a basketball court. And there's also a little courtyard where people sit down over here. And if you look straight ahead, you can see the basketball court. I'll give you guys a picture of the basketball court in a moment. But this is the federal housing complex. Apparently, this is where federal employees used to be located long before, and even some now, but most of course are in Abuja now, because that's where the capital is, no longer Lagos. So that is the outside. There's the basketball court. So as I mentioned, there's a basketball court on the property. This is the basketball court people come to play ball. All right guys, so that is the place. Um, what a day, what a day. So all of that taken into consideration, these are the things that you wanna know before you go to Nigeria when you're picking an Airbnb. First things first, number one, make sure they are super host. You always wanna choose a super host and you wanna make sure that they're not just a super host with like 20 different locations and make sure they don't only have like one or two reviews on the specific location you're looking at. Because somebody can become a super host, you know, meaning Airbnb decides that they are one of the better hosts on the platform. They can become a super host for having one location. They can open up a second location and they still show up as a super host, even though that second location only has two reviews recently. So that was one of the mistakes I made because it only had two reviews. The second thing that I would say is once you actually have your Airbnb booked, what you can do is you still have a cancellation policy for the most part up to 24 hours or 48 hours before arriving. So you should book your Airbnb weeks ahead of time, at least a week or two weeks ahead of time. And then what you can do is take the address because once you book your Airbnb, they give you the address to the location. Put that into Google Maps and do the street view view of that Airbnb so you get an idea of what the outside looks like before you even get there. That helps so much to give an idea of what the vibes are like. Also if you know anybody in Nigeria definitely reach out to them. I did that but I didn't do that after the Airbnb was booked and that was where I went wrong. And then lastly the next thing that I'll say is when you are communicating with the host after you book their location make sure that you ask specific questions to them about the check-in process. Is there a lockbox? How do I get a key to get in? Has the place been cleaned? Um, is there anything I need to know about the generator service hours? Do they fuel the generators? Um, does the generator run every time power runs out? Um, do the elevators work? Um, just ask all of those details because if you don't know that, it will be a surprise for you when you get there. And sometimes what you're doing by asking those questions is reminding their service and their staff to do everything they need to do to ensure that the place is up to par before you get there. So guys, I know I got a lot of backlash for showing this Airbnb video as part of a longer vlog. It got a lot of people, a lot of feathers ruffled, let's say that, and a lot of interesting responses. Um, but let, let me know, for your, for your own experience, if you spent $102 a night, what would you have expected from this situation? And would you have been happy with this Airbnb had it happened the way it happened for you? Other than that, um, I'd love to hear from you guys. Give me your thoughts and comments on what more content you'd like to see from me about Nigeria. I got a bunch of videos that I'm gonna post about my time in Nigeria. I wanna share that with you all. Um, if you know anybody who's planning to go to Nigeria and is planning to use an Airbnb and not a hotel because maybe they'll be staying for two weeks, make sure you share this video with them so they know what to do before they get there. All right guys, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.